Hey, I'm Dave Otero. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite plugins when it comes to processing base, and that is Neural DSP Parallax. It's probably the closest option to a one-stop shop for bass guitar when you're looking for a driven to, to fully distorted sound. And it's usually the first thing I'm going to pull up if I'm trying to process bass in the box like this. So I've got a project loaded up here. The mix is pretty much established, and I've just pulled all the processing off the bass, bass guitar. So we have like essentially a finished mix with just a raw bass DI. So let's listen to a bit of that so you can see what we're starting with, and then we'll get into the plugin itself. So it's already a pretty killer sounding DI, kind of a dark sound. It's played really aggressively, uh, which is the sound I like and uh, fits this song perfectly. But obviously the straight DI is not cutting it in the mix right here. Everything else sounds nice and squishy and balanced. And this thing's kind of just notchy and not doing the performance a lot of justice. So step one is gonna be load up parallax. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just load up the plugin and we can hear what it sounds like on the default settings. So honestly, it sounds pretty cool already. A lot of that's due to this killer DI tone of performance, but there are some steps that I'm usually gonna take right off the bat before we really start dialing the tone. And typically the first thing is I'm gonna drop the drives down almost all the way. And maybe we'll bring these up back up just a touch. But I'm gonna start with that just to kind of hear the tone of the plugin without as much uh, distortion. So let's just see what that sounds like. Cool. I, I pushed a little more grit back in there, but before I really dig into settings on this page, I'm probably gonna wanna tackle the cab sim section first. Obviously it's a final part of your chain, really shapes everything that you're hearing tonally. So it makes sense to dial this in and I kinda already have a few favorites that I lean on. So I'm gonna switch to those, uh, show you what those are first. And then we can go back to that first page and, and really start dialing in the amp. I really love the way the 906 model in this plugin sounds. I'm gonna usually put a dead center the distance of zero, and I might just start with only this one mic. So let's see what that sounds like. It sounds a little smoother already. And I just know from experience that I really love the way the low end of the 906 translate to a mix. If I'm gonna blend in another mic, it's sometimes gonna be the 184. I think that sounds cool. Again, I'm gonna put it probably dead center and just bring the level down a touch. But in this case, I think I just like the 906, so let's stick with that for now and head back to the first page. Step three is gonna be start playing around with your three bands uh, and your crossover points and maybe leave the drives a little low for now. And again, I'm using kind of my previous experience and know where I like to start with these. Uh, I typically like to move the low band down to around 70 or 80. And that kind of gives us a nice little natural low mid dip here. And then I know I'm gonna like to bring my high band a little closer to the mid band and probably bring both of them down just a touch. I find uh, moving these crossover points a little closer makes my upper mids feel a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna play audio. Again, obviously you're gonna wanna be making these modifications listening to, uh, to the bass guitar, but I'm gonna play it, kind of fine tune these a little bit. Uh, and then you can kind of maybe hear what I'm talking about. So I'm adjusting the compression threshold. And truthfully, I'm just using the indicator light uh, to kind of let me know. I want it mostly active. 
uh, not only on the attacks, but a little bit throughout the sustain too. But as you turn this threshold up, it's going to lower the amount of low end overall because it's it's compressing those down. So I'm going to turn this up a bit and kind of get the compressor reaction I'm looking for and then go back and grab this low point and just uh, alter like the overall level of the low end afterwards to kind of balance things out that way. Another thing I often do is if I feel like I want a slightly more driven sound, uh, sometimes rather than cranking up the mid and the high drives, I'll just push the input a bit. And you you can actually like push really hard into parallax and it sounds fine. You don't have to worry too much about clipping the input. Sometimes you may have to readjust your compression thresholds, but I often uh, feel like it just sounds good to set it up and then you can drive a little harder into it and things sort of just like kind of adjust themselves. So let's try that. Let's zero this out and then just try pushing a little bit harder for a little more overall saturation. Cool. I think I like the way that's hitting better. Gain feels pretty good to me. Low end feels pretty good. Step four, now that we kind of have our saturation and our multiband situation dialed in, we're going to use the output equalizer to give us a bit of a shape to the tone overall. And I'm going to start this process in solo because I can already hear some notchiness I want to kind of take care of. Uh, and then I'm probably going to finish it in context with the mix. And then, and then we may look at processing beyond that. Um, but you can get a lot done with just this equalizer. So it's already engaged. I'm going to start in solo, make some adjustments, uh, and then bring it back into the mix, find a level, tweak it a little bit further. Okay, now let's bring it into the mix. All right, that's already sounding killer. The low end in particular is like filled out really nice. Uh, I hear some notchiness in the upper mids and we're just gonna tackle that with a, a bit of additional processing. So I'm just gonna dump a good old Pro-Q3 right after my instance of Parallax. And I hear one particular area that's a little, uh, a little ratty feeling and we'll just maybe make some wide scoops all kind of while like finding a volume with a fader in the mix. Uh, but we're going to do some of this in context of the mix and some solo. It'll be going back and forth a little bit.
So that sounds pretty much mix ready uh, in my book. This DI is a special case. It's like incredible sounding and pairs really well with Parallax. If your DI isn't responding the way that you want it to, one thing you could always look at doing is applying some processing to the DI before Parallax. So that would mean some EQ. EQing before Parallax is gonna change the way that the distortion kind of wraps around the performance. You can change how aggressive the upper mids clank through. And if you feel like it's too wooly, uh, and parallax sounds kind of just like um, undefined. You can try cutting some low mids from the DI. Uh, and then while you're doing that, you're going to want to audition through parallax. Uh, same with a little bit of compression can also help. It's, it does a similar thing as to driving into the input. If you add a little bit of compression, I particularly like a distressor style uh, compression on bass. You can use that to flatten out the dynamics and actually push a little more output volume into parallax too. Those are two tools that I uh, will reach to often. Uh, but for both of those, you're gonna wanna audition, you know, listening to Parallax, probably uh, bypassing a few times if you need to. But yeah, if, if you're not getting the results you need, those are two tips you could try. Other than that, if you're not getting a pretty slam and bass sound with Parallax, then, then uh, you have some serious issues elsewhere in your chain because it just does a job about 99.9% .9 of the time. So feel free to uh, copy my settings and use them in your mix.